Hi. Now, the show IP route command is one of the more valuable commands you can use to find out what's going on inside your router. But when you use that command, you get all kinds of output, and it can be difficult to figure out just what the router is trying to tell you. What I want to do in this little video is tell you is help to demystify just a couple of entries that show up on that routing table so you can better understand how the routes are working for your router. This is output from a show IP route command. Let's focus on the top line right now because these two lines probably wouldn't appear together in most routing tables. But as an example, let's take the first route we see comes from a RIP table. R stands for the Routing Information Protocol. And that's the protocol you're probably most familiar with right now. So we know that the router has learned this route from RIP. And it has a route to this network via this network. And that's generally all we look at. But what about these two numbers in between, inside the brackets? We have 120 slash 2. Well, that means that is the administrative distance and the routing metric. So there's a little more information that it's telling us. It's saying that RIP is running at its default administrative distance of 120, and it's two hops away. So the metric is what the routers come up with when they take the, take the information from their topology database and run an algorithm and come up with a routing table. So RIP is a simple protocol from the early days when all the wires were the same speed, and all, we, all they did was count hops between the source and the destination. So RIP is pretty simple. And it knows that there's two hops to the destination, and it will run via this network out serial interface 1. The 120 is the administrative distance. That is a little bit different thing. That's what was uh, the administrative distance is how we calculate the reliability of routing protocols, routes and routing protocols. 120 is the default for RIP, and other protocols have different administrative distances. The more reliable the protocol, or the more sophisticated the protocol, the lower the administrative distance. Let's take a look at the second line now for another example of how these can be read. The D indicates that this route comes from EIGRP. EIGRP is an updated and much more sophisticated protocol than RIP. And instead of just counting hops, EIGRP can count bandwidth, wire speed, and a few other factors to come up with a much more realistic map of how, how the network is performing. So using the EIGRP protocol, there's a route to this network with an administrative distance of 90 and a routing metric of 3074560. Big numbers. Now, we don't need to worry about the metric because there are many more calculations going on in the background for EIGRP. And each protocol is going to have a metric that comes out just a little bit differently or considerably different. But what we need to know about most here is the administrative distance is more reliable because it is less than the RIP protocol. The administrative distance of 90 tells us that we can count on this route being a little more useful and reliable in the long run than the RIP route we'd seen earlier. Now, administrative distance, you know, reliability of routes and, and administrative distance go hand in hand. The more reliable the route, the lower the administrative distance. Now, what could be more reliable than a route that's directly connected to your router? If two routers are directly connected or if a network is directly connected, that is their administrative distance of zero, all right? Slightly less reliable, but not very much, is a static route that you create. When you have a static route, the router assumes you know that that route's going to be good, and it assigns an administrative distance of one. So administrative distance can run from zero to 255, with zero being the most reliable, and 255 being a route you probably don't want to use. The metric is the calculation that the protocol uses to determine the best path to the network. Now, now that you understand just a little bit more about what's going on inside this output, I think you're ready to play with it. So I have a couple of challenges for you to try out. First, use the show IP protocols command to take a look at what protocols are running on the router and compare them to what's in the routing table. 
then add a couple of protocols or take some away and see if it affects any change when you do the show IP route command. You can also uh, do an administrative uh, <coughs> trick by, you can manipulate this administrative distance by making it higher than it should be. Configure a static route, and this is a little more challenging but it's worth trying. Configure a static route that should have an administrative distance of one, but at the end of the command, type 121 to make the administrative distance less reliable than RIP. And you'll see that, I hope you'll see, that the static route does not show up in the routing table until you remove the RIP protocol. So, by taking this information, practicing a few challenges, I think you'll be confident in knowing what the router is trying to tell you next time you do a show IP route command. My name is Rick McDonald, and I've been teaching in the Cisco Academy for about nine years, and I teach at the University of Alaska Southeast in Ketchikan, Alaska. The most important points on that subject are knowing what the administrative distance and metrics are, and that they're valuable tools in, in uh, knowing how your network is performing. Also, that the routing table is giving you information and it's important to know everything it's trying to tell you because that can be a source of problems. You know, those little metric codes can alert you to uh, unpreferred routes. So it's important to know the minor details of the information too. The tools and resources aren't well, the most important resource in t or tool, I guess, in uh, teaching IT is humility. I think an instructor has to be comfortable with standing in front of a class and saying, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know the answer to this. There were years when I wasn't able to do that, and I look back at those thinking it would have been much easier to, to just admit what I didn't know and try to find out. I think uh, also taking time to use the tools that are available on routers when teaching routing. Getting to know that routing table, I used to fear it, and now it's my main teaching tool. Everything you need to know about routing comes in that output. The other tool is uh, experience, time. You gotta put time in and learn and make mistakes and keep learning and go on. But courage. Uh, a new instructor, uh, especially if they're new to routing and it's new material for them as well, students will go with you on that journey to get to get good. You know, don't uh, don't try to pretend that you know more than you do, but tell them that we're all trying to figure this out and let's discover it together. That worked for me as as I taught more and more advanced courses. I found that that made things a lot easier for me and the students, and we all got a lot done. Once again, I think I wish I knew how to use the output tools from the uh, show commands. Uh, I kept trying to, when I first started, I kept trying to just talk about what I knew. But using show commands, you can find all kinds of things to look at. And then you can develop a sense of curiosity. Well, what is this? You know, what's that mean? There's, there's plenty there to go looking for. So a bit of curiosity helps as well. And that's uh, one thing that I wish I hadn't been as tentative about pursuing some of those other paths.